today we will talk about predatory publishers. Uh, as a matter of fact, as a researcher, you are confronted uh, or you will be uh, at least on a regular basis to this world. You maybe have already received emails from a unknown publisher inviting you to submit an article. And uh, this is why it's particularly important to understand uh, first what a predatory publisher is, and second, how can you figure out you are dealing with one of them in order to properly defend the scientific value of your work. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, this presentation will focus on articles, but be aware that uh, you could come across to similar fraudulent entities for conferences and for books as well. Uh, in this case, we are talking about Vanity Press. Uh, so let's start with some context and let's find out uh, how and when the predatory publishers appear. To do that, let's take a look at the very simplified and uh, brief history of academic publishing. So until the 80s, the business model of an academic publisher is quite simple. Authors submit articles to journals, journals review them, collect, print, and distribute them in the form of a paper journal. Uh, the main profits are made by selling subscription to libraries. Therefore, the publisher needs to ensure high quality content to perform well on the market. In the late 90s, uh, the appearance of two factors change, uh, changes radically the landscape. First of all, the diffusion of the internet make uh, possible to start publishing journals in electronic version only. Uh, secondly, the open access movement starts gaining momentum. At first, at first with the diamond or platinum, platinum model, uh, with no fee request to publish. But a few years later, uh, the gold model appears, and since then, uh, the authors are supposed to pay a fee uh, to have their articles published. As you can understand, this changed dramatically the landscape. Uh, potential new, new players now, they don't have to print and distribute their, their, their journals anymore. And moreover, they can get money from the authors themselves. So they don't have to worry about uh, quality and library subscription. So suddenly there is a cheap opportunity to make money uh, just uploading articles on, to the web and uh, leveraging the publish or perish principle. So this is how the first predatory publisher appeared. But what uh, a predatory publisher is? Uh, well, this is not an easy question, to be honest. Uh, in the last 20 years, almost 400 academic articles have been published on this topic without uh, reaching a consensus, uh, a consensus on a simple definition, not even around the label itself, uh, predatory publisher. So uh, the first one who tried to define this issue is uh, Jeffrey Bell, uh, probably the pioneer in this particular field uh, and uh, also the creator of a very well-known and controversial list of predatory publishers. So let's read it. Um, publishers which publish counterfeit journals to exploit the open access model. They aim to dupe uh, researchers, especially those inexperienced uh, in scholarly communication. They set up websites that closely resemble those of legitimate, legitimate uh, online publisher and publish journals of questionable and downright low quality. Many purport to be headquartered in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, but really hail from Pakistan, India, or Nigeria. Uh, then, in 2019, a group of academic librarians got together and tried to find a better definition. So, uh, in this case, it's predatory journals are publisher, uh, predatory journals and publishers, sorry, are entities that priorita prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship, and, the char and that are characterized by false or misleading information, deviation from best editorial and publication practices, a lack of transparency, and or the use of aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practices. So as you can see, there is no simple and direct definition. And this is just because this phenomenon is not an easy one to describe with a few clear objective criteria. Uh, predatory publishers, in fact, uh, act uh, uh, in a number of different ways, uh, mimicking the real publishers and real journals, most of the time taking advantage of the weak spots uh, of the publishing industry. Uh, and uh, they evolve and adapt quite quickly. Uh, that's the reason why uh, predatory, predatory publishers world is a gray zone. It's truly difficult to define a clear criteria to spot one of them. At our best, we can be aware of a number of factors and raise uh, our awareness where, when evaluating a journal which we don't know. 
Uh, this grid presents some of the criteria we should pay attention to in order to make an informed decision. Uh, I'm not going to, to I'm not going through uh, them uh, one by one. I just want to bring your attention to some of them, keeping in mind uh, that some of these criteria, uh, for example, the quality of the editorial process, can't really be verified before submitting an article and having it published, of course. So while being 100% sure about the deceptive nature of a publisher is quite uh, difficult, there are a few criteria that should raise a red flag and create a reasonable doubt that we should further investigate. For example, a good starting point is uh, to locate the ISSN, uh, ISSN of the journal on the website and check if it's a real one. Then it's also worth looking for a postal uh, um, address and the phone number on the website. Uh, then you can check uh, if uh, the journal is indexed uh, in uh, well-established databases like uh, Scopus, Web of Science, uh, etc. Uh, you can also check if the publisher is listed uh, on uh, the directory of uh, Open Access Journal, and if it's a member of the industry industry association as uh, OEA, HSPA, and the COPE. Uh, these are good starting points, all of them. Uh, but there is still the chance that uh, they won't completely dissipate the doubt. Uh, devil uh, usually is in the details, but to spot a predatory publisher, sometimes you should rather look to the big picture, taking into consideration as many criteria as you can. Uh, for example, I recently came across a website which contradicts most uh, of the criteria listed here. For example, the website layout was quite neat, uh, cutting edge, there was a nice and detailed diagram uh, of their editorial process. Uh, the article uh, uh, processing uh, costs were stated quite clearly, but still, eventually, this was a predatory, a predatory publisher. So that said, uh, why you, as a researcher, should stay away from them? Uh, one of the myths uh, to be debunked about predatory publisher and the content that they offer is that uh, um, is that the, the content that they offer is necessarily bad. Uh, this is not true. Uh, there are researchers that in complete good faith submitted and published good research in predatory journals. Still, these papers have not been peer reviewed, probably not even edited. And the fact itself that they have been published on a journal with a questionable reputation represents a risk to the credibility, for your credibility as well. Uh, also because this publisher in most cases, they don't have, of course, a retraction policy. And, uh, and the lack of peer review makes them uh, the perfect mean actually to disseminate pseudoscience or alternative truths. So this is also another reason why you don't want to publish on one of them. Uh, last but not least, the founder of your research won't be too happy to learn that his money went to a questionable publisher. And on a higher level, you don't want to waste public money. So uh, in the end, what's the best way to defend yourself uh, from uh, predatory publishers? Uh, in my opinion, awareness of the issue is the first fundamental step, but uh, not always, of course, the doubt uh, is enough. So here I listed uh, uh, several tools that uh, you can use to verify the nature of the publisher you're dealing with. Um, and uh, also uh, most of the links that I mentioned during this presentation. Of course, uh, when in doubt, you can always rely on the APFL library publish support team. So we reached, uh, here we have some, uh, some references. Uh, we reached the end of this quick introduction to the world of predatory publisher. I hope it was useful and uh, I thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, listening.